So why am I involved again? Because your timeline branches off from that universe, and I seem to recall you mentioning carrying on past the Mutantthon. Ah, well, it does pass the time since there's no more mutant movies. But couldn't you have waited until I'd at least got over the shocking cold? Ah, you'll be fine. Just look down the barrel. Okay, going in five, four, three. Here's a turn up for the books. Me, Funky M, former something like a superhero type guy, bringing to you a whole mess of movies all about the universe next to the universe with my old lot. And if you couldn't tell by the hat, we're kicking off with something seasonal. The third movie about the guy that claims to have privatised world peace, Iron Man. <laughs> Coming to you from 2013, Iron Man 3 follows on from the first Avengers movie. Tony Stark is all set to celebrate Christmas with Pepper, but a sinister, terrorist cell has other plans. This movie also touches on the horrors of PTSD and what makes a hero. Plus, you know, there's a smart mouth kid in the movie, just a heads up. Alright, let's get into it. This is our first Marvelous Legend, Iron Man 3. So where does a story start? How about in 1999, when some nerdy looking fella's trying to get a word to party animal Tony Stark? So Tony rang in the new year with Maya Hansen. Maya Hansen came up with Extremis. It hacks the brain to unlock a kind of healing factor thing. Problem is, it runs hot. And the geeky looking blonde guy? Aldrich Killian of Advanced Idea Mechanics. Oh, we'll get to him in a moment. Skip ahead to 2013, and Tony's trying out a new design on himself. <laughs> Just about works straight off, too. But that's more than can be said for the Iron Patriot. War Machine in the colours of the US flag. Don't see what diff it makes. Well, me neither, but it does play well in the sticks. Oh yeah, there is that. And Tony, when the fear hits. PTSD? Anxiety? Just spins out of not being prepared for space. Well, I'm betting that he don't make that mistake again. Back at Stark Industries. Just look at Pepper's 4pm. Killian again, and what a difference 13 years can make. Yeah, he's pushing extremist now. Must have brought Hansen on board. But Pepper smells gun oil and ain't buying. Smart. But I don't remember non-mutants exploding like that. Happy Hogan's made a sterner stuff, of course. But you don't spit on Tony Stark like that. Cause he'll expose ya. And you definitely don't blow up his house. Because Iron Man is a survivor, and he winds up in Tennessee, without a suit, without a hope, but with a nosy kid. Why Tennessee? Well, some military guy blew himself up there, except that it looked a lot like attacks claimed by the Mandarin, some scary looking Mideastern guy threatening America for reasons, I don't know. So Tony went to check it out. But that's a whole heap of trouble in itself. Lucky that our guy's a dab-handed improv, then. Now this whole heap of trouble is trying to keep the whole military guy blowing himself up thing under wraps. And why? Well, remember I said that extremist runs hot? Well, so do they. And Iron Man has the secret of the Mandarin. Well, all right then, mission on. But yeah, big scary Mandarin. Not so scary after all, it's just an actor from Croydon. Alright then, the whole story. From the top, Killian hired Hansen, took a dose of extremists, started human trials, and anyone that was stable he took as his personal guard. The unstable ones were left to blow themselves up, and that's where Trevor Slattery, Croydon's favourite son, comes in. He was on the outs, hooked on... something. But he was promised a whole heap of it if he'd work with these guys. Well, guess that's today's lesson for the kids. Don't let that muck get none of its hooks in you. Stay clean, hit the books.
But then we get dragoned. And get this, Killian Extremist Pepper. Okay, so I've skipped a chunk. In short, Maya Hansen turned up at Tony's gaff, wanting to spill the beans to him, trying to get him on side. After the attack, Pepper and Maya find some place to hide out, but Maya was still in with AIM, and Killian turns up, claiming Pepper in the process. But there's good news at last. Because the suit that flew him to Tennessee is all charged up, and ready to rock some faces. Yeah, so I kinda skipped the entire B-plot of the movie, which is AIM stealing Iron Patriot's armour to trap the president in it so that they can kill him on live TV on Christmas Eve. But yeah, Rhodey saves the prez and gets his armour back in the process. And two guys with pistols ain't gonna cut it. So it's time for a house party. And Tony goes to save Pepper. But Killian's the poster child for extremists, and he's burning to beat down on our guy. But that's not so smart, you see, cause Tony's always got a trick up his sleeve. But Pepper's finally gonna get the last word on this. So let's wrap it up with a clean slate, Happy Hogan back in the game, and a surprise cameo. So that was Iron Man 3. Okay, so how are we doing this? Uh, Avengers team? Legend worthy of remembrance or something? Something else? Let's just go with thumbs up, thumbs down for now. Okay, okay. Well, I'd give it a thumbs up. Okay, so tabling for a moment the debate on whether this is a Christmas movie or not, it's definitely a Marvel movie, and that's not always a good thing. But by this point, we were still high on the Avengers, the big super team movie was fresh in our minds and the possibilities seemed endless. Safe to say though that that was then. Anyway, let's start with the man, Robert Downey Stark. Part James Bond, part Emmett Brown, all determined to stop what he thinks is just some mad terrorist. But really, the mad terrorist is Guy Pearce's Aldrich Killian, and that's a problem. All smug superiority, I am invincible and you can't stop me when they still go down to a big enough hit in the right places. And Don Cheadle makes a professional Colonel Rhodes. All business, even if he prefers War Machine to Iron Patriot. And even Gwyneth Paltrow's Pepper Potts gets her big damn hero moment. But the big props, at least if you ask me, have got to go to Sir Ben Kingsley. His Trevor Slattery as the Mandarin is so many levels. And some might say that his accent was slipping at times, but I reckon that it was foreshadowing that the master weren't actually all that real. And then you got the effects. Suitably hot stuff, even if we're all kind of used to it now. I like the clever thinking when the Mark 42 suit used its own hand to pull Tony free of the wreckage. And how does this movie flow? Well it's mostly Tony's story, occasionally cutting away to show the villain motive or Rhodey as Iron Patriot. But yeah it's mostly a straight drive from Happy getting blown up to Tony getting involved to being stripped of it all and getting back to doing his best thinking on his feet. To getting the suit back, to deciding that it's all too much, and that there's only one Iron Man. Problem with it is, it's a Marvel movie, and anyone watching closely enough is going to figure out that the Mandarin wasn't really in charge of this long before it's finally revealed. Though there are a couple of smaller surprises. The VP being in on it, the remote interface, the end cameo. Okay then, is it a Christmas movie? Well the amount of times they play Jingle Freakin' Bells over, I'd sure put it in that category, but once we get rolling there's very little mention. But then, if Die Hard gets a pass? To wrap it up then, this movie, Iron Man 3, as a final solo outing for Tony Stark, provides a great capper to the first phase of the MCU. And it goes to show that even without the suits, or all of his fancy armour, or any of the Avengers, he is Iron Man. But we've only just started. Our next stop is Phase 2 proper and a very dark world. And that's coming to you next time. So for now, I'm Funky M, and uh, yeah, see you around, humans.
Hey all, me again. Just reminding you to do all the YouTube stuff. Blah blah crowdfunding. Oh, we have a Discord. You should totally check it out. I'll link it below. But, you know, it's cool if you don't feel like doing any of that stuff. See you around, humans!